So we are reading verse 12 from Srivilapa Kusumanjali. O Kalyani, auspicious or beautiful girl, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness o kalyani auspicious or beautiful girl when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness कुछ काम करो आ गया तो माना तुम्हारे पास आदमी है ना टाइल लगाने मिल जाएगा कि तुम्हारे पास अच्छा तो तुम आओ फिर वो काम क्या अभी ये आपका साइड चलता है कि माय पोजीशन आई एम डेस अच्छा I am completely absorbed in the material senses and I cannot hear my Swamini. I want to hear her, I want to feel her. But I am just very much covered in my material senses and that is making me deaf. I cannot hear you. But when she cures me and she allows me to hear her nectarian ankle bells, then this deafness can be cured. That's why also Swami is called Kalyani. She is auspicious. She brings all the good luck and brings all the auspiciousness and favorable circumstances in my life. When I am deaf, she can make me hear. When I am blind, she can make me see. But why you say I am deaf? What is meaning? I can listen to everything. Huh? So how can I be deaf? <laughs> <laughs> How is this possible? <laughs> Listen to the lines between. You also can listen, right? We all have ears to listen. Why why they write their death? They have to listen in between. In between? <laughs> Everything in between. In between? In between the lines, in between the words, in between the... We're also part of the Well, maybe we have our wrong ears. Mm. This material. No, this material, yes, maybe not work. Mm. I think it's a controlling mind. Yes, okay. Oh, so you think? Which ears we need to... Listen. Sense, of course, I need my spiritual senses. And then the subject of this world is how to attain the spiritual senses. So, and we also <coughs> we have an ego. And sometimes due to our ego, we could not surrender. To, to the uh, hearing. Also, our Baba is not to sky. So if we are not to sky, then we may hear. 
but that we may not do uh, here properly. We may not attain Manjari Baba. That may be we could say. <coughs> O oh, Kalyani, auspicious or beautiful girl, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness? Uh, they, I remember the Gurudev's explanation of Kalyani a few years ago. And he said, Kalyani means she is always auspicious. Because in this word, Kalyani is a Kala. Word Kala, it means time. She is always auspicious. And who can be always auspicious? Only embodiment of pure love, Mahabhav, Swarupini, Radha Thakura. Only someone who is embodiment of pure love can be auspicious for everyone, for everybody in this world. So Radhika is very auspicious to Krishna, to her lover, to all living beings. And especially she is very, very auspicious for her maidservants. All the time. Kalyani. And because of that auspiciousness, she is also very beautiful. Because her love makes her beautiful and auspicious. And we can see, like Gorasundar asked every one of us, what does it mean, really, deafness? And does it mean that we don't have ears? Actually, deafness is, like Suniti explained, is deafness to the spiritual subjects. We have very good ears, 100% of ability to hear materialistic subjects. And our ears are very, very expert in that. But Raghunath here is praying and calling it, this is my deafness, this is my sickness. I hear everything except my beloved Radhika. So, he is giving the cure, like Suniti said. I want to hear the sound, transcendental sound, not materialistic sound, transcendental sound from the jingling of her ankle bells. And this is the only cure for my materialistic, for my real deafness. And how I can hear it, like Jayanandaji said, only through Staibhav, through the position of natural feelings, the time Radhika's maidservant. So the jingling of the bells is also jingling of Radhika's love, which is which she is spreading to the hearts of everyone, especially for those who are ready to receive it in their hearts. Because this kind of sound can be heard in the heart. And through the heart, attachment will arise and sadaka will be able to drink through the ears. 
So this is the proper Shravanam hearing. Not selective, not in the moment I like it or I don't like, but hearing must be relishing. When the hearing is relishing, it means that the words of Acharyas are jingling. Their syllables are jingling in our ears, in our heart, and heart is trembling. And this is the mercy, Kripa of Kalyani. Radhika, who is always, Kala, always merciful to everyone without discrimination. And this is the quality of love. So this Kala, actually, time, we can see here, can make a bondage if it's materialistic, Kala, make a bondage around the jiva, but if it's in connection with Radhika, it's liberate jiva, giving the Amrita eternal life and relishing, ability to relish. Maybe you will remember there is this one story when one devotee asks Sadhu, how is it possible that Sadhu is never dying? Can you explain me this? And Sadhu said, that's the question of Kala. It was his answer. It can be other answers, but it's the question of Kala. To the ordinary persons, Kala very aggressively, time is coming in unexpected way. Doesn't ask, is it the proper time for you to die or not. Materialistic Kala doesn't ask materialistic person. But when Kala approaches to Sadhu, she is approaching with folded hands, very humbly informing him, time came for your to pass away. But it's your decision. whenever you want to do it. I'm not supervising, I'm not supervisor of your death. You are free. Mm -hmm. So this is the way how we have to look on Sadhu, that he is never dying, because he is living in Swarup, and Swarup is never dying. And this is the Kripa of Kalyani. All merciful Swamini. And Kala means time for someone who couldn't catch the point. Kala means time. And with time, death is coming or not coming. To materialistic person is coming, that is coming according to his destiny, his time, his kala. But in the case of sadhu, someone who realizes his swarup, time is serving him and says, whenever you want, it's up to you not up to me. 
So by listening the jingling in meditation, jingling of the words of Acharyas, we can hear Radhika's jingling of her ankle bells. Then it's Dasi, 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 Dasi. It's not Raghunath, like Raguna, uh, like eternally liberated soul, associate of Radhika, said, I want to hear the jingling of your ankle bells. But Sadaka is meditating on his words, his expression, his realizations, his visions. always behind his Guru Manjari and Manjari and Manjari and Manjari and Manjari. And this is the best way and position how we can receive this beautiful sound of jingling of Radhika's ankle bells. Oh, so nice. Beautiful. beautiful. This is the meaning of this, what you say, das anu das, ne? what you explain. Because the eternal liberated soul, in our case, is Raghunathas. And we are his followers and we serve the dasis who are serving him. In a direct line. So many generations of Dasis, but actually it's not so far, it's only some generations. And uh, we can see all the, the points where they are living, where they were active, it is very close. And even our Gurudev and his Gurudev are also Dasis in this line. And we can stay when we realize our Swarup and live in this, we can realize them and stay forever with them, never disconnected. And then with this body, we can listen to the jingling of Swami's ankle bells. And we can see the auspicious beauty of this Swamini with the eyes of this body, the eternal spiritual body. But without this senses, we will never see this. Without this body, we will never be with our dasis. Not with the material body. And so, it becomes crystal clear that we have to fix our goal in Swamini, in her service, and on the service of the Guru, but not on the person of the Guru, because he will leave in this material body. But we can only be with him together eternally in the spiritual abode, with a spiritual body like him. And then there is no meaning of leaving. We will always stay together, like Gurudev said. He always said that he is never separated from his Guru. How can be that? Can we see him here? So we are in the place where he was. No? He was active on this room in many places here. He was meditating 
but we cannot see him. So how can Gurudev say he is never separated? <laughs> how is this possible? Only with spiritual eyes he can see, with spiritual ears he can listen. So we have to come on this point to communicate with Guru and Param Guru. Then we never separated. And then we can listen to this jingling. Date, date. Can I just say one thing? You just inspired me. No, 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 no. no they, they just um, so getting so inspired by this jingle bells. Um, and then I was just thinking why Raghunath Goswami is uh, praying to hear that sound of the Nupur of Swamini. Then I was thinking, actually, when this sound enters us, that means we're always with her because she doesn't go without her and goes anywhere. Mm. And so we can always follow her. So when that moment comes, that means Raghunath is praying to show us when this sound enters us, and we hear that sound means we are there with her all the time in every of her day-to-day, night-to-night activities. We can be with her. And these ankle bells are the most powerful uh, souvenirs, de- decorative ornaments um, in the universe because it's the only sound which matches and supersedes Shyam's flute. Wow. He cannot, wow. Wow. only wow. that sound <laughs> makes him even dance, right? So he makes with yeah. his, he makes with his flute yeah. everyone dance, but she with her ankle bells makes even him dance. So we as Dasis exactly oh, know man. why we need it's to right hear right. that ankle bells all the right. time right. in our heart to meditation. Thank you. I'm not receiving a chair. I have to escape. No. Really. <laughs> no you. Really? 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 In the classroom, teacher teach you how to live in this life, how to earn money. And you teach how to behave with the people, how you can nice with the people. How you can live your life peacefully. So he's doing it. This is 24 7 is a body for the service. You always be in anchor place. Oh, yeah. The progress mentor, Nakadia. So who listen anchor bells of Radhika is 24 <laughs> 7 use his body for the service. I'm not sure. If, uh, can you hear Guru Dev? Guru Sundar? Okay. Not so clear, really. Yeah, not so, so clear. The sound is going like yeah. through filter. Okay. Um, Guru Dev is uh, hiding today himself. Normally he says, I am hiding, but today he's hiding. <laughs> so he's saying, that whoever hears her ankle bells means it's 24 7 in that consciousness, in that seva mood. That's then he uses material body. Then he uses his material body. All body. material circumstances. All material circumstances. In the service. In the service. And checking 24 7 that he's doing. Her. And now we are here. Himself 24. You can hear? 
Yeah, now. That is the work of Sadhak there. Beautiful. This is the moment. Oh. This is the moment we are waiting for Gurudev, right? We are praying. This moment we can listen to this ankle bells. <coughs> then no our way. life will no. change. No way without listening. When this mercy come, I'm close. Everything is with me. Intensely we pray for this moment. The miracle, this book is a miracle. In our life, we understand the words of Ananda. Wow. Life can be switched like a mm. anything. Then you will think, why I waste time for <laughs> No more taste for this other okay. subject. Go on. Very important man. words. Every word is important. Go on. Read by. Ha. Huh. In the previous verse, it was experienced. How the Ishta day is rarely attained. Yeah. And how <coughs> with the Ishta day. That is my goal. No, 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 no show no, my no. picture. No. I will not say. Who is your Ishta day? If it is not fixed, if the Guru Dev is your Ishta day, Kapoor. Easter Dev has to fix. I when my Easter Dev is not there, for what I will do? Why I come for? <coughs> Temporary identification is my goal. But it's still your Worshipping material. A, you leave B star, it's better to do business <laughs> and suffer in my sense. <laughs> Easter Dev has to fix. <clears throat> then you need your sarup, you need your how will it start after that? And what Guru they will do? He only say about this today. The day I took initiation, he gave me his today. And totally Radha Rani, hmm. Radha Mohan, he bring and he say, I, I give you new servant today to you. That moment, that day, my hundred, what you say, hundred eighty or what? Degrees. Degrees, life, new. I was a different person from that day. Different. In one day, my all behavior changed. Same day, good. Ah, same day. And slowly, slowly start developing my state. So many miracles happen after that, I cannot say. So many. I got the walk is city. What I say, it happens. Yes, speech. Oh, wow, yeah. The day you will get 
attached to them. You are such. And the day you get to see your Sarup, and Sarup Siddhi, <laughs> you need nothing. <laughs> why, why you need anything? Masuna, you can listen to it nicely. Yes. You understand? Yes. yes. No problem. So is today, my dear, is so important. Goran Sundar lives. Why he changed so fast? He has a different instinct. I said, it's okay, but <laughs> and he changed his attitude. Right, Goranga? I don't understand, Gurudev, what you are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly to say. <laughs> ah, yes. now I remember. Now I remember. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yes. Sad Buj. Sad Buj. Our, it was Sad Buj. Yes. Was, now I remember. Yes. I forgot it, Gurudev. I already forgot <laughs> it. Yes, get rid of it. Yeah. You see? I want to say, Gurudev, something. It's a technical thing. Because in the book and in the PDF, it's a different thing. So the devotees who are translating or reading, they can be confused. So my suggestion is that they are reading carefully what Rasama is reading. Because it's completely different explanation and commentary. From the book? Yeah, from the book oh. and PDF. Old version of oh. the book. What? Old version of the book. We I'm sorry that I'm interrupt, but just suggesting devotees who are translating or who I have PDF and book, and it's a difference in the commentaries because devotees who are reading simultaneously with us, they can be confused what's what's going on. Hmm. So we will bring some books from from Vrindavan if they are needed, so they can also ask us for get some uh, books because I think they will print it again, right, Suniti? So we have to sponsor Yes, because yes, we have. Yes, because Rasama is always reading from PDF. And sometimes are differences, and other devotees are reading from the book, uh -huh. and there is no differences. So I'm just putting this because it, it can be confusion, and later on devotees will ask, um, sending messages, what's going on, and so on and so on and so on. So this is improved <laughs> version of the book. Book or PDF? PDF. PDF is improved. But in this case, Guru, sometimes it's happened one, two sentences are different. But in this case, it's a very, very big difference. Okay. Uh, read from what is Rasa? No, no, Rad Rasa May will read from PDF. So in the previous verse, it was experienced how Ishtadev is rarely attained and how the desire to attain her, even in a dream, had arisen. In this verse, Shiragunata prays, O Kalyani, 
when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectar remove my deafness here the sound of Shiradika's ankle bells are compared to an ocean of rasa and nectar. This rasa is tasted within the spiritual self. Anuragi Shripad Viva Mangalatakur Lila Shukra was fascinated by the jingling of Govinda's ankle bells in his Krishna Karnamrita and said, May the sweet jingling of the jewel ankle bells of the Gopi lover that sounds like the cooing of the swans in a lotus forest of the Yamuna River be manifest in my mind. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraja writes in his commentary on this verse, that the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. Mm. Wow. So this is the difference between two balas. <coughs> Lila Shuka is Sakiba and he wants to hear the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells. Mm. But Manjar is are listening on a different way. They want to hear how he is running after Radhika, their Swamini. And because of that, mm. sometimes we can hear his jingling, but because he is running to my Swamini. And this kind of jingling increases emotions in Manjaris for Yuga Lakishwar. And also for Radhika, because my Radhika is so important in his life. He is running after her. And I like to witness this. So this is the difference between Sakiba and Manjaribha. And two different persons, like Lila Shuka, Bilva Mangal Thakur, and Krishna Das Kaviraj, are in different bows. And from these different angles, they are describing. So we have to know what which Stai Bhava is our own, and from that angle to relish every sentence. Then we can hear jingling of our beloved Ishtadev. Ah, oh, so mm. beautiful. Beautiful. Because of this, yeah. our prayers is clear, right? We never pray for the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells. And because of this, this book is so auspicious, it's clear. We pray for the listening to the jingling of Swamini's because they are defeated. They defeat not only Krishna's ankle bells, but also Krishna's fluke. This we like to listen. This ankle bells. So this is the what? reason, sorry, this is the reason why we have to listen 
only from those who are in our own bhava. Because so, they will okay. explain everything from our desirable bhava so that our bhava can be nourished and increased. Otherwise, it can be complete confusion. And listening, Raghunath, who is the follower of, follower of Rupa, is the listening of Rad through his syllables, through his words, we can listen Radhika's jingling. Then Manjari Bhava will come in our heart, nourish heart, and develop our Swarup. This is my understanding and practice mm. of not on our own and uh, following or yes. oh, thank you Cora. and uh, you said something Sundar, that uh, sometimes we like hearing his jingling and i was feeling wonder is like when both are jingling together his ankle bugs and her, and then we know what is happening in the Nikunja. <laughs> we are, then we like to hear his jingling also. <laughs> so many intimate jinglings for the bhajan. <laughs> what then to speak? of the sweetness of the jingling of Shiradika's ankle bells. Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati writes in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verse 16. When can I see Sri Radha with her charming form Shyly looking down at her own toes when she sees the moon like face of Krishna, the king of relishes, from afar as she steps along with jingling ankle bells. The endless streams of Mahabhag that gush from Radhika's limbs when she experiences the ecstasy of seeing Mohana sprinkle her ankle bells and make their jingling sound like an ocean of nectar. This is the key point. <coughs> Ankle bells are in co contact with personified Mahabhava, personification of Mahabhava. And because of that, they are jingling so sweet. Radhika's Mahabhava is like a spice making ankle bells embodiments of Mahabhava also. Because they are in touch with her lotus feet, with, in touch with her beautiful sweet body, and they are Chintamani. They are changing the heart of Krishna they are influencing the heart of Manjaris and this kind of sound, which is the, where the source is Mahabhava, is changing the heart of everyone who is listening and meditating on that. And if we listen from the mouth of Rasik devotee in Manjari Bhava, then we can get this tune and rhythm and sound from
from which our heart can tremble and melt. Because the melting of the heart through the jingling of the name of the ankle bells is the most important thing. And this is the reason why Shravana is coming first and then Smarana. Without Shravana, what will, which kind of swara, Smarana we will have? But with Shravana, which increases our and nourish our Manjari Bhava, then Smarana can start to take deep roots in our heart. And like result, it will be melting under the guidance of Rupa Anuga, followers of beautiful Radhika Dasi, Anudasi, 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 under their guidance. Listening has to be under their guidance. That's my point. Daddy. Beautiful, huh? very beautiful. So Radharani body made by Mahababa. And uh, whatever connecting Radharani, like uh, Uncle Bell, Sash Bell, <laughs> anything, also like Mahababa. So that sound coming from this Uncle Bell, also uh, infusing Mahababa. So whoever here, like uh, Krishna, he become mad after Radhika, after the sound of this vibration. Also Manjari also, Manjari was so uh, happy. Krishna's mad after uh, Radhika. So Goranga Sundara Prabhu explained very nicely. At first we have to hear Shuravana from Rashka Vaishnava. Because Rashka Vaishnava could penetrate our heart once type Baba. And also this infusing prema or One drop of <laughs> Mahababa. So, and then Shurabana is changing and our heart melting. Then our Kirtan also become changing. And then also Shurabana, Kirtana, and then Smaran also changing. This all coming yesterday, you know, uh, we are reading this coming from Krishna. Uh, the mercy of Krishna or Krishna devotee's mercy. Actually, this is Rashka Vaishnava's mercy. Means Radha Dasi or Radha Dasi's and Dasi's and Dasi's mercy. Our life will change. Gurudev, just before he, he's talking, Gurudev life changing is Gurudev's mercy. So our life also may change due to association with Rashka Vaishnava. Also, this Rashka Vaishnava's book, like uh, Virapak Manjari, this book is so powerful. This, this book infuses uh, Stai Baba mm -hmm. and also Manjari Baba uh, who, want to, who want to have it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, my small feeling. And to get the inspiration from Bhavanda. Thank you very much. <coughs> Sri Ravnata Dasa says, Please let me relish just one drop of the sweet nectar of this jingling.
his heart is filled with this strong desire. And this desire always increases, causing him to lament like this. Words cannot really describe these lamentations. Through these prayers, the absorption of Srila Raguna Das Goswami can be experienced. Experienced. Through his words and his realization and his absorption, we can get some drops of transcendental reality. And by carefully listening and relishing the words of Acharyas, it's not theory actually, relishing the words, then we can feel something, which otherwise is not possible to feel in the conditioned life. This is something which we have to receive. It's not on the platform, it doesn't exist on the platform of material life. We should receive with our heart patra, our pot. Because this is our worship then. By listening proper, uh, drinking with the ears, we are making puja. And puja is not like uh, with few items, incense or ghee lamp or something, flower. No. Everything is puja. Raghunath, in the words, wants to hear ankle bells, which he put it on Radhika's feet. So he made puja to Radhika, putting the proper item on the proper place for the proper use. Like Jayanandaji said to Madan Krishna, this is the person, purpose of my puja. And then we are coming to the point Shravanam, we said, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Archanam. We we learned about va praying, Vandana, but also here is a proper Archana, not from the point of Vaidhi Bhakti, from point of Raga. And this is proper paraphernalia, ankle bells, is paraphernalia for worshipping Radhika's lotus feet, because she will uh, chant her lover. And this is perfection on Manjari's seva. And Sadaka Neophyte, beginner, can feel it through the words of Dasi, Dasi, Anudasi, Anudasi. <coughs> actually, actually, we can see here this is a menu. This book is a menu to us. And when we read what Dasamanja was reading last verse, the words of when can I see Sri Rata with her charming form, then this is our prayer. This has to be our prayer. And it has to become a condensed, intense prayer. So this manual is exactly showing 
how to come on this that we can listen the jingling. When can I see Sri Radha with her charming form? Shyly looking down at her own toes when she sees the moonlight face of Krishna. So these prayers, we have to put our own personality as a manuary in this prayer. It's exactly a manual. And now you help me to understand one thing. That prayer is not only enough. If we stay only on the level of prayers, one year, two years, twenty years, we will not come in the ocean of living. What, for what we are praying. So this is the reason why I understand Gurudev is always emphasizing, think on your Swarup, think on your Ishtadev, be connected with Guru Manjari, but meditate on yourself to know who you are and who is your goal. And do it in, like a practice, not like only prayer. I pray, I pray, I pray. No, it can pass. 30 years like in prayers, but we have to live <laughs> what we are praying. Right. This right. coming yeah. to me. <laughs> yes, um, with the share that also, this was a lot of my feelings when I look at my own practice when does the prayer become alive when does the prayer become a feeling that is permeating that is in my whole being not only like a pious prayer or like a ritualistic repetition but when do these words become alive and felt and real? And this morning we had a nice uh, reading of Radha Rasudamiti, where when you read the words <clears throat> that in the beginning Krishna helps the devotees by giving them desires for devotion, that they come from him, these desires. That is his mercy. And then later, Shrimati Radhika is also giving her dasis the desires. So, these desires, they also come from her. And of course, with the desires, there will be also some fulfillment sooner or later. Once the desire is there, I feel that it will happen sooner or later. And that is also her mercy. The desire is her mercy and the fulfillment is her mercy. And then we were reading in that regard. Uh, Vilap Kushmanjali, verse 15, where Srila Raghunathas <coughs> said that when I came to Radhakund and I saw the beauty of Radhakund, that gave me the desire to really want to become the dust. Mm. So it's interesting how this is all interconnected. Because Radhakund is also Srimati Radhika, it's not different from her. So meditating on her in her different forms, how she's coming into my life, how she is already there, but I am blind. 
I am deaf. But these prayers, they are helping that she can also answer. And I want to hear her answer. I want to feel her answer. And that is what I was carrying in my consciousness today and that what you evoke in me to share this. Because these prayers, they cannot be only empty words or like the repetition. That is so... It's so... Tasteless. It's not a normal prayers, but... Um, and a relationship with Swami from person to person is really what is our heart's yearning now. And that yearning is also even coming by her mercy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pichu. I just also wanted to share that these prayers are like prashad. Also, they are prashad. Also, they are given to us. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Words cannot dis really describe these lamentations. Through these prayers, the absorption of Srila Raguna Dasa Goswami can be experienced. Not everyone can be addressed so lovingly with Kalyani, all auspicious Swami. The sweetness of this address does not indicate the heart's perception of anything from this material world. These transcendental pastimes bloom up within the heart in such a way that nothing from the visible world can be perceived within the heart anymore. Material consciousness muddles the heart of the practicing devotee. This experience cannot be had through mere dry knowledge, but only through pure love. Characterized by an intense feeling of possessiveness, In this connection, Shri Krishna says, That which is night to all beings, in the state of transcendental bliss, the self-controlled saints keeps awake. And that temporary material happiness in which all beings keep awake is night to the seer. Bhagavad Gita. So this is the famous words of Bhagavad Gita. And we can stop here just to explain. Because in these words is explaining what we were talking all the time today. Because it said that for materialistic person, spiritual subject is not interesting at all. It's like a dark for them. They sleep when they listen 
when they are here about spiritual subjects. But suddenly they awake with some Gramya Kata starts. Kata full of materialistic subjects. <laughs> Senses are awake immediately without any endeavor. <laughs> but for real spiritual persons, when he hears one syllable, one drop of spiritual subject, he immediately, without any endeavor, is wake up. One drop. <laughs> Only one drop. <laughs> Only one drop. Only, Only one, one drop. Yes. Yes, Guru. And this is the sign of great taste, attachment, and love. And whatever covers these subjects, spiritual person is always ready to listen. Again and again and again and again. And when he hears suddenly something which is not tasteful, which is full of materialistic points, it means that it's time for him to sleep. <laughs> Why to sleep? Because in his sleeping, in his sleeping, he can dream about spiritual subjects. <laughs> Even if he is talking some materialistic subject, he is still sleeping. He is not involved in that. In the same time, in his heart, in his mind, he is always in bhajan. And mantra is always going in his mind and his heart. Whatever he speaks, what is materialistic. But when some, like Gurudev said, drop of spiritual subject arise, then he immediately is awake. So this is the test, actually, for us to see which kind of taste is and how much we have. And when this will come in our life. That is the real love of math, uh, sadhus and uh, wow. sadhus in the, uh, the love of math. What is explanation and explain this? This. Kripa is coming suddenly, unexpectedly, in completely unusual way. No one can plan it, no one can force it. And just the partial of the second is enough to completely change the heart and devotee or person will attain Siddhi. Sarva Siddhi Hoi. When and how? In the close association with Sadhu, who will give him Lava Matra. Yes, Gopinath, I see you. <laughs> I see me. I'm here, I'm here, I'm visible. Uh, we just had this uh, example with Gurudev the last two days. From a material point of view, he's really not. Um, yesterday he was very, very sick, and today also. But the moment class started yesterday, he was like strong like a lion again. 
the moment he heard one word, or like today also, as soon as Guru the and one one word enters, or one her word he hears, immediately he rises again in his inner Swaru Shakti. So it's the living example. On the one hand, it's very sad that Guru is suffering from that, uh, like from his health, but um, then again, he's so merciful that showing us again the way. Thank you, Gopina. We are also sad, but in the same time happy when he is happy. Who else but a person who has awakened his eternal identity can address? Radha Rani, like this, calling her Kalyani. The great sage Shukadev was astonished by the feelings of mindedness felt towards Krishna by his loving devotees in Vraja. And he told to Maharaj Parikshit, the Lord who is called Adhokshaya, he who is not perceivable through the material senses, has no inside, no outside, no before and no after. He is pervading the world from west to east, inside and outside. And his form is the world itself. But now, he allowed himself to be bound to a grinding mortar by his gopi mother, just like an ordinary mortal human child. That was Srimad Bhagavat and the chapter. Here, the all-pervading Lord loses his omnipotence at the hands of his loving devotee. What is impossible in the world of tattva, spiritual truth, becomes possible in the world of Leela. So, what is not possible to explain through the philosophy through the logic, through the argument, it can be very easily understood through rasa, through relationship, through lila. And sometimes we cannot find the answers in philosophy. But answers are very obvious in the lila. And to meditate only love will give us opportunity to understand what is hidden in philosophy and what is not possible to say in philosophy. Because the language is completely different. Language of love is different from the language of knowledge. This is two kinds of <laughs> languages. And this is the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying that only through poetry you can express rasa. Only through poetry. And for relishing this poetry, it requires proper audience, rasic audience. And someone who is rasic devotee, pure devotee, 
who is speaking who, through his mouth, which are re trembling in the rhythm of his heart. So, proper, again we are coming to the point of proper listening, but of what? Knowledge kata or rasa kata? This is two different kinds of kata. Love and knowledge. So we have to tune our hearts to receive and to feel the language of love. And here in the verses of Raghunath, especially in Vilapa Kusumanja, we can hear the jingling of his words. If we are listening the language of love. Otherwise, we are there. We have to listen with the right body. Who is this? Who is this listener? Who I am? As a realized soul, I will realize the love. As a material embodied soul, I will realize lust. And this is a big difference. Mm. Although Krishna is the Supreme Lord, who cannot be perceived even by great mystics, he still allows his cowherd boyfriend Sridama to mount his shoulders after he lost the game. The Supreme Lord, whose lotus feet cannot even be perceived by the greatest mystics, now holds his lotus feet on the chest of his cowherd boy friends. There is no comparison to the amorous relationship a devotee can have with the Lord. He, his beloved is sitting in a kunja. His beloved is sitting in a kunja being angry with him. And the Lord stands at the Kunja gate with tear-filled eyes, like a beggar, like an offender. Mana my proud Radhika, then angrily rebukes him, saying, Go, Madhava, go, Keshava. Don't speak your false words to me. Just follow that girl who removes your sorrow. Yeah. Oh, lotus eyed one. Prema really becomes manifest when there develops a feeling of he or she is mine. Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna, 
Everyone may say that he knows you in full. Let them know it. What more can I say, O oh Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness with my mind, body, or words. But in Vraja, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a yard stick to see what size is his. That is the wonderful power of the love of Raja. So this is possible, if I can say, or this kind of love and relationship is only possible in Raja. When there is no whiff of Aishwarya, and where Krishna can freely express and perform his Nara Lila. And this is the reason why Vraja is so special. Because in Vraja, there is completely natural love. In devotees, <coughs> in Radhika, an exchange of their relationship is completely natural without all reverence, fear, hesitation, and so on. This kind of love is only can be found in Vraja. And even Krishna knows that, and he just threw away all his omnipotent powers, shaktis, and he becomes Diralalita, careless prince. He doesn't care about anything, you know, to be prince, it's very beautiful position, actually. You don't have to be king with full responsibilities. But the prince, perfect position in the village, not in the town. I just wanted to briefly add something, because yesterday Guru Dev was saying that uh, about the bridge bodies in the class, we're talking about why we always have to give respect to the bridge bodies because for them, Krishna is theirs, right? These their Kana Gopal, they have no own reverence, they see him as their own. So then I was thinking, what you were also telling out that this is only possible in Braja to experience this intimacy is that why. The bridge bases can see Krishna as their own is because they are living in their sky yeah. And we should pray to them that we also get our sky as Dasis. That's why we always say, pray to the bridge bases, get the blessings of the bridge bases. Wow. Of course, get the blessings that we can stay in Vrindavan. No, more that we can get sky Because only in sky we can enter. I was feeling this Gurudev without Sai Bhav. How can we say, You're mine, I'm yours? How can we experience Raja mm -hmm. Brain without Sai Bhav? And that's why we have to follow the bridge buses, the Ragatmika. We have to follow them because they have Sai Bhav. They have Sotsalya Bhav. They have Sri Krishna as their small little baby. They have the Sakya Bhav, they have the friendship. We, of course, want Madhurya Bhav, we want the Bidasis, but we have to pray that we also get this type of. Then we can say, I am yours. We can say, You are mine. You are mine. mine. You are mine. You are mine. <laughs> like the Bridgevasis say, He's mine. He's my Kanaya. He's my little one. You know, he's my naughty. 
is mine. So we also should pray this Guru Dev. Is this is this the way? <laughs> Only with Sai Bhav we can enter. The address Kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of Radha and Mohana's mutual relish of each other. The Acharyas have told, we must see Mohana from Radharani's perspective and Radharani from Mohana's perspective. She bestows welfare to him. Krishna bestows welfare on the world and Swamini embodies his welfare. In Purvaraga, the embodiment of bliss is hankering for Sri Radha. The Mahajanas have written, Radhe, when Subala gives Krishna a golden garland of Champaka flowers, his mind trembles and tears of passionate love flow from his eyes. Oh, beautiful girl, your form always awakens great love in his heart. Day and night, he murmurs, Vrishabhanu Nandini, without saying anything else, out of confusion. Although hundreds of thousands of girls speak sweet words to him, he does not listen to them, even in dreams. He can only pronounce the first syllable of your name, Ra. But out of ecstasy, he cannot pronounce the other one, Da. His eyes carry streams of tears. That jewel of men rolls on the ground. Who can describe his distress? Govinda Dasa submits this news about Kanu to your lotus feet. Know that he feels miserable and that only your grace, Kalyana, can destroy his suffering. So this is the result of hearing Krishna by his own personal example is showing us that hearing the name of his beloved in his ears and his heart is jingling like ankle bells her name is jingling it's sweet 
Queen Jingling. So it's so a chanting for him that when he just speak ra, he cannot finish the another syllable da. And as we know from examples of great devotees, why they have been always in ecstasy through the chanting of the holy name. Because they were listening jingling. They were relishing this jingling of each syllable of name of beloved Ishtabi. And they had experience and their heart melted because the jingling, this beautiful sound of the name of beloved. So Krishna, it's not that he's only listening Radhika jingling and relishing it. He is relishing it because he is also relishing her name. Everything is perfectly in connection. Nama, Rupa, Guna, and Lila, Radhika. This is a jingling. Sri Krishna bestows auspiciousness on the world, but Srimati Radhika bestows auspiciousness even on him. Mohana considers himself blessed when he attains rather than his company. He feels that his world is empty without her. And she feels the same towards him. Vrishabhanu's daughter thinks, I fell in love with he who can never be possibly attained. And out of love, I cannot even die of shame. There is no end to the chastisement of my superiors. I am completely controlled by others. What a contrary condition. Why don't I die? The parrots can see Krishna, but there is no way for me to see him. Mohana also cries for Radhika all night, missing her. Although he is Ananda Gana Vigraha, the very form of intense transcendental bliss. And when he opens his eyes, he thinks he sees his mother giving him a cloth that is yellow like holly. In this way, he remembers her again. 
who in this world knows how to love like her? Still, Mohana did not manage to experience her love fully. So he accepted her mood and complexion and showed an anuraga similar to Radhika's as Sri Goranga. During the final 12 years of his manifest appearance, Shigoranga was burning in the fire of that love in separation. What a condition for the embodiment of transcendental bliss. Each pore of his hair was on fire. That is the agony of Krishna's Kalyana Karini. Shiradika, who acts for Krishna's welfare. With his own hand, Krishna completed a verse of Gita Govinda with the words, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. Radhe, give me your generous lotus feet. It is as if Krishna said to the poet Jayade, O Jayade, why are you hesitating to write this down? My whole life is fulfilled when I attain these lotus feet. Who else knows how to love but she? The whole world tells me, give, give. Only she says, take, take. She worships Krishna in a form that fulfills his desires. And thus, the Puranas call her Radhika. She is the queen of the Kunja cottage, who makes eager Mohana enjoy so much, as if he is a beggar getting a meal in the royal palace. Shiragunatasa says, you are making everything auspicious for Krishna. We are very happy to see that. When will your ankle bells that jingle while you fulfill all of Mohana's desires. Remove my deafness so that I will not desire to hear anything else anymore. The jingling of these ankle bells takes place when the Shyama Rasa is relished. But these ankle bells don't just jingle straight away. 
they jingle within this relish. This sound will awaken such devotional yearning that the ears do not want to hear anything else anymore. That is the poetic secondary meaning of the word badiria or deafness. Then Shiraguna Dasa sees a sweet pastime through his spiritual eyes. Radha and Mohana dance the rasa. Mohana stands still and Radhika's ankle bells give the rhythm to the sweet tune of his flute, which is the emperor of sounds and increase that sweetness. Meanwhile, Mohana relishes the sweet jingling of Radhika's ankle bells as well as the sweetness of his own flute play, which is like an ocean of sweetness. That sound, that tune, is the great opulence of the kingdom of God. His lotus-like mouth makes the flute play the sounds of Brahman. This sweetness makes everything sweet and reverses the natural behavior of all living beings. It stuns the moving creatures and it causes the trees to get goose pimples of ecstasy. In this way, the jingling of Radhika's ankle bells causes the ocean of sweetness of Krishna's flute song to increase. I repeat the verse. O Kalyani, auspicious or beautiful girl, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa, cure my deafness. Jai Jai Shri Radha.